Hi there, and welcome to today's Quentin Carpenter Nature of Flowers video. Today we're making a sunset in a mug. You may have seen earlier my response to Victoria Seema and her storm in a teacup with a big wave crashing through. And today we're going to be looking at doing a different version using a picture of a mug. This is one of the natureofflowers.com special edition mugs that are available today. And also a sunset photograph that I took recently. So you can see over here we've got several different layers and I will talk you through the tools and how to make one. So first of all, we need to file open and get our picture of the mug. So there is our mug and you see it's got a nice frothy coffee in it. Then what we're gonna to need to do is go to file and place embedded and we will find our picture of the sunset, which we will then add into our image. You can see we need to press enter on the keyboard so we can then move the picture around. Once we've got the picture, we can move it around, rescale it so that it fits our mug. So I want to make it a bit bigger. Now, I can't see what's going on behind it because at the moment it's solid. So if I change the opacity with this slider here to about 60%, I'll be able to see exactly what's going on behind the image. I'll also then be able to scale it exactly where I want it to fit inside where the coffee is in the mug. And I approximately there so I've got all the nice sun rays coming through etc press enter and I'll have placed it in the right place now what I need to use now is the ellipse tool or the elliptical marquee tool to give it its proper name and I will find the corner of my mug and draw an ellipse shape like so so that I can cut out a really nice section of sunset that I can then manipulate further. At the moment it won't let me do that because this corner here means that I need to rasterize my layer. So I click rasterize layer, then I go edit, copy, edit, paste, and you will see I have now got a layer with the cutout circle and the original layer. So I'll hide the original layer and there is my basic image with the cut out shape which I can then manipulate and move how I want it. Now you'll notice with this that the edges are very very neat at the moment and on the final one I have here I've got all the coffee bubbles coming through so to do that I will need to use an eraser tool to erase parts of the image. So if I go onto the eraser and up here you can see that I've got different settings. This may be like that when you click on it. So you want to click on general brushes on the little array and a soft round one and then change the scale according to what you want to do with it. Then I can go around the edge of the clouds making sure that I see some of the bubbles coming free to create that blended effect. So go around the edges and blend in the bubbles of the coffee where the clouds are to create that nice surreal image. Now, you'll notice right well, at the moment it's looking quite pale. So if I go to my image adjustments and my brightness and contrast, I can increase the contrast and suddenly the clouds look a lot sharper and I might change the brightness accordingly so they really pop out. Okay, now also... I can do that for my image of a mug. I can make adjustments to the brightness and contrast. A bit more contrast. Slightly darker. And click OK. Now that looks really cool. I'm really pleased with how that turns out. But I'm not very happy with this brown countertop underneath it. You'll see on this one that I've got this lovely ombre um, effect. So on this one, I want to cut out the mug. Now I could spend hours going around it like this with one of these tools. And that would be great, but the latest upgrade on Photoshop means I don't have to waste my time doing that. I can go to select, and I can select the subject of the picture. Making sure I'm clicked on the right layer, it will then do nothing because I have my little cross, little layer locked. So we make sure that when we do this, we go select subject, when we haven't got a locked layer and still nothing is happening which is unusual so 
we will look into why that could be happening. We will make sure that we have got on the move tool and select subject. And there is the problem. See, we were on the wrong tool and that caused it to have a problem. Once you can see this flashing line, you'll know that you've selected the subject. Now, again, we can go to edit, copy, edit, paste, or we can use the keyboard and press control J. But I'll do it this is in case you're watching it without sound. So copy, edit, paste. We've then cut out the mug and we've cut, got the sky going on. We need to create a new layer now in between these two layers. We will then use the gradient tool. And the best way I find of doing this is to zoom out slightly using the minus key on the keyboard and then draw a line where you want the gradient to go. And it will create the gradient. You can then swap that behind the layer, zoom back in, and there is your finished sunset in a coffee mug, which is super cool. Now, if you've enjoyed watching that video, make sure to come over to Quentin Carpenter Nature of Flowers, hit that subscribe button, and give it a thumbs up. Thank you for watching. And oh, while we're here, actually, I'll just show you in my playlists where you will find all the Photoshop videos I've been making recently. And you will see in here the one I referred to earlier, which is the storm in a teacup. And you can see here when this. So I made this video almost a year ago now, so you can see the Victoria Seamers work here. So it's like me looking at me. So if we zoom forward, you can see similar techniques and there we are. So that's the one I made almost a year ago with the storm crashing through it. And here today is the one that we did here. Now, obviously, if you wanted to change the color of the on road background, something I forgot to mention, we changed the two colors down here. So we could have a red and we could have a yellow. Um, sorry, red. And a red, right, red and a yellow. Okay, and then we could do the similar thing, come out and line it out draw our ombre look and then we have different color backgrounds or we go the other way. Whichever way you prefer. So to be honest, I'm not very happy with either of those. So I'm going to press Control Shift Z, Control Shift Z, or go to edit and undo gradient, edit, undo gradient, and I'll back to how I liked it. So not always do these things work when you do experiments. And I'll go back to the original one, which I'm really happy with. So, yeah, thank you for watching, and um, goodbye, enjoy, thank you, and bye.